Greetings, greetings, greetings. You now tuned in the 13th of astrology.com. Uh, on this episode, what I want to do is, is that I want to speak on the soul and um, in reference to some questions that were asked of me a while back, not recently, but it's really pertaining to information that I had shared on the um, particular last video that I had dropped. And the um, question came to mind, and I wanted to kind of like present it to you guys in reference to a person losing their soul or, you know, losing the very essence of their self and is that possible? Like can you really like sell your soul? Can you really lose your soul? Are there even are there human beings that are born without a soul? Because I know in the conscious communities <clears throat> a lot of people teach about how um certain groups of people, especially racial groups of people, are born without a soul and they don't have a soul or they're like soulless. And also um some in some conscious groups they believe that animals don't have a soul as well, so that's what I want to kind of address here. Now, as far as the human being itself, we all, from my research perspective, in order for you to incarnate in a physical shell as a human being, you have to have a soul, period. And if you were, were to ever lose your soul, the very essence of yourself, you would essentially die, like instantly, because you wouldn't be able to interpret life or be able to filter life and the experience of life you know as we experience it now you wouldn't be able to filter that so essentially we have three different aspects of our soul from you know what I believe and what I teach um, we have what's called the inner soul the over soul and then we have what's called the outer soul these are three aspects of the soul um, the outer soul is the filter that I'm speaking about from which we experience. This is how we essentially relate and process this particular reality. We process this reality through what's called the outer soul. Now we have um, the inner soul, and the inner soul is essentially um, goes into our very essence. This goes into our records and you know our connection with the Akashic records and past lives and things of that nature. So we have that aspect of the soul. And then um, lastly we have what's called the oversoul. The oversoul is like the higher self and this is the aspect, you know, of ourselves that judges everything. You know, it's kinda like a watcher and it records everything in this life and essentially judges and gives us judgment based upon uh everything that we experience via the outer soul which is like I said it's the filter that we experience the outside world and the outside reality and then even the inner soul because the inner soul when we experience things from the outer soul we process that information and store that information into what's called the inner soul and then the over soul acts as a judge so when you start talking about people losing their soul or selling their soul or things of that nature um, what you really have to basically remember is, is that this is only essentially dealing with the outer soul. If a person was to lose their soul, this only goes into the outer aspect of our reality. This has nothing to do with the inner soul or the inner aspect of our reality. So when you talk about a person that's soulless or that has lost their soul, this is a person that essentially has been compromised predicated upon the outside their outside experiences and they when they, you say that they lost their soul I mean really no one can really lose their soul but what's happening is that their soul is being held by an outside being or outside entity and it could be a human being as well so it's kind of like uh, essentially they've created negative contracts and have established negative cords and negative ties with beings that are holding their soul and draining their soul and using them for their own energy. So it's kind of like they're being held. Um, they can get it back, essentially. They would have to accept the situation for value. And this kind of goes into, uh, like, you know, when you teach about in certain sovereignty circles, they talk about accepting things for value. So they would have to accept the situation for value. And this is the only way to get it back. And what I mean by that is, is that they would have to accept the situation for what it is and take responsibility for the situation based upon the experience that they're getting 
from the situation in order for them to get their soul back. But a lot of people that have lost their soul and things of that nature, they're basically victims. These are people that have been victimized. Um, these are people that are empty and drained. They really care nothing about their self. You know, and they have essentially what happens is that they have became and they've been put into submission by outside entity, outside material things, or outside force. So say, for instance, a person that has lost their soul, you can say they lost their soul and they sold their soul for money. Money controls them. And economics and resources and things like that control them. So essentially, if a person was to ever, you know, mess with their money or tamper with their money, you know, then they would react. But based upon that, their whole being is programmed for money they have no see a soul is basically what gives you your creativity this would what give what gives you I guess you could say like your demeanor or your your swag if you will like it's your soul like what makes you an individual and people that suffer from soul loss these aren't individuals they are all basically just like clones you know these are people that are just fixed on one particular thing in one particular aspect of reality like some people may have lost their soul to sex or some people may lose their soul in a relationship and your whole life is like you're locked in that's all you think about is that you're locked into this particular situation based upon you losing your soul so you have no identity outside of whatever you sold, lost your soul to or sold your soul to and you're being held by an outside force but you can get it back like I said by accepting the situation for value and what I basically mean by that is is that you have to really analyze the lessons that you know you have learned from the situation and take full responsibility and not have a pity party based upon your contribution to you losing your soul or you selling your soul because you can't sell something unless there's a contract that takes place and this goes into like spiritual contracts so if you sell your soul this is some form of a spiritual contract that has taken place and basically what happens is is that the only way like I said to break it is to is to accept it for value or to pay the debt you know that you hold that that you owe the particular person that's holding your soul and sometimes when I talk about paying the debt it's not like you really owe them something but paying them the debt may be standing up to the situation or standing up to the entity and saying I'm not going to deal with this anymore you know I don't owe you anything and basically making a statement the same, you know, because really, if essentially, if an entity is holding your soul and holding, you know, your essence, they need you, so they really owe you, but you have lost your power. There's no empowerment in that, you know. So basically, what happens is that you are a type of individual that you're stuck, you know, you you've lost your sense of self worth. Essentially, is what I'm saying. So what's going on is that you don't, you feel like you owe them something. You feel like you have to continue to keep contributing. To this stronger entity or this higher entity to feed it when really you need to reverse the situation so that's that's my views on that um, like I said then once you do that you can establish a relationship with the inner soul and the over soul so that you can connect back and you can basically fully materialize and grow your soul back to where it once was you need to establish a relationship with the inner soul basically what you do what I mean by that is, is that learning what situations may have happened in past lives if you do believe in past lives that led you to getting to this point where you did sell your soul in this life and like what you know like what what was the experience what was the lesson is this something that carried over from a past life like what is the spiritual lesson in this and then when you connect with the oversoul this goes into the judgment you know and the judgment is basically decisions what decisions did you make to get yourself into this you know and trace yourself back and you have to have a lot of strength because you have to know that it's never too late and this may sound very vague you know to a lot of people there are a lot of people that are rich mega rich people that have no no soul you sold your soul for material gain you have nothing you have no soul you have no sense of self-worth your whole life is based upon some contract and some company owns you you may need to hear this you have to look in and find a value within yourself as a spiritual being you have to learn who you are you know as a spiritual being and you have to become essentially spiritually sovereign first and look at your own value and begin to manage your situation on your own never give an outside entity any power over you yeah we're all connected but at the end of the day you have the power 
the ancestors of the higher self change any situation in your life. You can change anything in your life. Essentially, but you have to have strength and the soul represents this is your power source. This is your fuel. That's why I'm talking about strength. The soul is linked into what's called the sun in the um, zodiac. And the sun represents the fuel. This is the fuel of the universe. So this is your very chi. People that are weak and things of that nature, you're suffering from soul loss. People that feed off of other people, you're suffering from soul loss. You are suffering, you're weak. You have to rely on other people to sustain yourself. Which means that you have lost the sense of who you are yourself. So it can be gained back. You know, it can definitely be gained back. It takes a lot of spiritual work. Um, you know, you can start off with just reflecting over, like I said, how you got into the situation. You may have to start working with uh, different crystals and things of that nature. I refer, I recommend rose quartz for people that are suffering soul loss. Rose quartz is a really good stone to help you to restore yourself and help you to replenish yourself. And things of that nature so um it takes a lot of self-reflecting um you once you trace back the situation you may find that it was 10 years ago when you first started making decisions to sell your soul so it may take you up to five years to heal from that because suffering from soul loss this is something that you need to heal from you know you may have to go undergo reiki sessions and have to totally transform into a whole new being because this is something that you have to totally heal from to get out of and it doesn't take I mean it's not going to just happen overnight you know um, finding your own power and there are a lot of people that may say well I know I ain't lost my soul I know I'm not suffering from this but you got to ask yourself are you controlled by outside being does an outside entity control you at the end of the day or outside source control you and your decisions you may be suffering from soul loss so that's going to uh, do it for me on this particular episode. Um, just something to reflect over. Hope that, you know, helped and answered anyone's questions that may have been pondering these particular things. And until my next video, I'm going to go ahead and shut this down. I'll leave you in a whole tip. Namaste. Peace.